what we got here is the part you already know. We created the fluid domain. I showed you how to create the mesh. Okay, so it's the same mesh. But when we made the solution uh, and the FEM, we said it's a thermal flow analysis, a coupled one. So with flow and thermal in it. We also have advanced flow and thermal for high speed flows and things like that. But here it's just thermal and flow. We already made a solution here. If I edit this, what do we see? Typical parameters for a flow solver. We say most important it's a steady state solution. You also can do transient solutions. So transient is a function of time. Steady state is equilibrium position of uh, of the, the model. Okay. We also defined already some things in it for the demo that I don't need to define everything. I define on the outer surfaces a convection to the environment. Let me recreate it so you get an idea how you do it. Let me delete it. So we can here go to convection to environment, say tangent faces, all those. Very nice. And I say I got the convection <coughs> in what square meters of maybe 55. And you can s specify the ambient temperature if you want to. You could say around this thing it is 10 degrees. So this I now created again from scratch, but in the files you got it's already there. Now I also defined a flow surface. The flow surface, oh let me show you a very nice feature, flow surface, show only, okay, now you see very nicely the faces where I define the flow surface. Let me then show you another nice feature, show adjacent, and you can see where it is. Very nice to see where you define your boundary conditions. So what is a flow surface? It's not really needed to do it, but what you can do with the flow surface, if you would define it from scratch, you can say I got the fl embedded fl phase if there's air or water on both sides. But if there's only a gas at one side, you say boundary flow surface. You can say what is your uh, wall friction so you can say it's smooth or it's rough with a certain roughness and that roughness will influence the convection property so with this you can define how much convection will be more or less i mean the convection values will be calculated by the flow solver because depending on your flow you got other convection okay so i defined already that flow surface the other thing that I also already defined are some exits, openings, but not everything. So let's go to the boundary conditions. So in flow we got flow boundary condition. We can say there is an opening. Let's call this one exit 5. And I can say, well, here there's no opening yet. Well, I think it is this one. Let me yeah, turn on the rest. Okay, so I say this is my exit number five. You say external conditions, so ambient. Every time they refer to ambient, the ambient is what is defined in your solution. So in your solution, this form you remember from steady state, we have ambient conditions. So every time you refer to ambient, this is your ambient. Okay, we have an exit. But now we have to define a flow. And I say, for example, on this phase, I got an, on this phase, I got an inlet flow. So something is coming in to it. With a mass flow or a fan curve, I redefine the velocity. Just set, I believe, 10 meters a second. And we can say, well, the temperature I specify on, let's say, 90 degrees. So air because the mesh is air is coming in at 90 degrees at the velocity of 10 meters a second 
there's much more options but it's you know, a basic demonstration so I press on solve OK and it starts to solve it's writing out the input deck for the solver and when, when this one is started the flow solver starts this is not Nastran it's the NX flow solver and thermal solver during calculation uh, you can lo look at the log file to see what he's doing what's happening at the beginning you see your properties ambient condition of 20 degrees uh, gravitation value direction etc he gives some feedback uh, and at a certain point in time is going to start to iterate, converge. While it's solving and converging, you can look at the flow convergence, thermal convergence, and coupled values. When it's converged, it will finish. Smith. So now it's performing result post-processing, it's extracting the results. And he asks, do you want to view the log file? I say no. Oh, maybe yes, <laughs> because on the boundary conditions, on the flow surface, if you got the flow surface, you see the forces on the flow surface. On all my exit and my inlet, you see the volume flow and the mass flow. So for each, each exit, you can really nicely see what the flow is through those. And then if you want to see results, just open the results and you can check for velocity temperature of the solid, temperature of the fluid, um, if you look at velocity you can say well you know, first of all show it in meters a second, you can also say uh, I don't want uh, my element edges, but you have a view like that, you can say show me uh, arrows for example, and the color bar, not thermal colors, but structural colors. Okay. You can also ask for streamlines. So you create some points, select where he has to calculate streamlines. Say OK. OK. And now you see the streamlines in your model. You can, with results, you can dive in and just play around with the settings. It's really, it's, it's not too difficult, but just play around with all those settings and look what's, what happened. Oh, you can also animate this. There's some animation options. Um, if you see, that's. Uh, I say upstream I want it, so I say play, no, stop, play, okay, then they start from here, and the speed, I mean, you, you really can, uh, you really can play around with this and, and see what's, what's happening, okay, it's just fun, you see, CAE is a cool, fun application. Certainly if it's an X, it's so cool.